good morning and welcome to Winnipeg now the reason I got my little shortwave radio out here which right now is tuned into long wave <laughs> uh, is uh, because I wanted to remind myself to tell you that the information I gave you about the frequencies that WWV broadcasts the signal that my watch and the clock receives may not have been right. It might not have been 400 uh, kilocycles or kilohertz. Uh, it uh, right now is tuned at 400. I'm not hearing nothing. <laughs> it might have been 440, or it might might not have even been long wave. I I could have been wrong about that. Somebody like a uh, five airbrush Tony would probably know because he's into radio and. I think he's got his ham license and so I think some of you others do too but uh, <clears throat> anyway if anybody knows for sure let me know it's not that important but it'd be kind of nice to I'd kind of like to know what frequency like like I know that the short wave that, that we pick up that we you know we hear this the signal with the where the seconds are ticking by and the, and the every minute the guy says the time at the tone will be you know yada 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 uh, okay that that's that's in short wave I think it's uh, uh, 2.5 5 10 15 and 20 megahertz uh, yeah I think I think that that's the the frequency that you would tune into and I can generally get one of those on this radio almost any time sometimes real strong sometimes just so that you can barely hear it but anyway that's we're when this is not a shortwave radio show uh, <laughs> we have our power supply up and running and it's been plugged in all night and it's fully charged <clears throat> mind you I think it was pretty pretty much fully charged when it came from the factory because uh, when when I when I switched it on here yesterday uh, it, it indicated that the battery was already right up now right now <clears throat> what we've got going on here is uh, this this thing here the, the other end of this is plugged in over there uh, to, to an outlet and then this part here is plugged in right here so we've got a switch going on here it makes it nice and handy to simulate a power failure Okay, now in, in, in the back here, this cord here goes, goes to the ad adapter that powers the, the monitor. So the idea is that when, when I flick the switch, it'll, it'll simulate a power failure, and we should see that the screen shouldn't even flicker. Okay, at least that's, that's what my experience before with these things uh, because I have actually been sitting at my computer working when there's been a power failure and and all the lights go off and you sometimes you hear sort of a little click because this thing will make a little click when it when it kicks in especially if it has to generate a lot of a lot of power like if, if I've got my my big computer running and the monitor and maybe something else and it's got to put out maybe uh, 200 watts all of a sudden it makes a little noise and then it starts to it starts to beep to to warn you in case you're not in the room <laughs> uh, now I know that there there is another way that and I have done it you can hook a, a, a cable into this thing and then you hook it into your computer and when there's a power failure it will automatically go like uh, control s you know to save your work and then it will shut the machine you can program it to shut the machine down i never bothered with that all i wanted was that when the power goes off the machine stays on so anyway let's, let's just let's just try it here and and uh w watch the monitor oh by the way our sharpies came yesterday i know i, I didn't need 12 but uh you can't buy just one unless you go to the you know unless you go to superstore or something uh anyway uh Let's just uh, try try this out here. I'll, I'll just I'll just take and, and use this switch here and 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 watch watch the monitor and uh, you know it, it it shouldn't even flicker. Okay, here we go.
Uh oh. I, I, I smell smoke. And my, my fire extinguisher's down in the workshop. Has anybody got a flashlight? Could, could somebody maybe flick their bick? Okay, you know I'm kidding, right? I didn't, I didn't throw the switch. Okay, now let's do it for real. Okay. I had to have a little bit of fun here. Well, the beep works. <laughs> okay, let's turn it back on. Okay, I can, I can still hear something running in there. It's probably recharging the battery for the little bit that we used. <laughs> okay, so, so that's how it works. Uh, oh, got to tell you, a little while ago, I was, I was looking at, uh, at the uh, sunrise, and I was noticing Merv's flag doesn't look flapping right. So I, I zoomed in on it, Merv, you gotta change your flag. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let, let's move on here and do something model related. Uh, I, actually, what I'm gonna be doing is spending a little bit of time. I want to get this in the other room and hook it up to my computer and uh, uh, clean up a little bit here. And uh, I want to try and do do something that's model related. Lately, it's uh, what is it? And, you know, is it the fear of airbrushing? You know, it, it, it's not that hard, Ron. <laughs> okay, I am slowly getting myself back to normal here. Since I last talked to you, I've been outside. I had to uh, shovel for the for the mailman, uh, <clears throat> and you know, grocery deliveries and that sort of thing. And uh, the snowplow came by last night. And uh, then the front end loader came by and cleaned off the driveway. And then the snowplow goes by again this morning about 9 o'clock. And it fills it all in again. So I don't know what they're doing. They're not very organized sometimes. Uh, so anyway, we, we got that done. But while I was out there, my one of my other neighbors sees me out there. And he's got a snowblower. And he said, I'll come by and I'll clean it out for you. Which, which he did. <laughs> yeah, we, we got... I've said this probably ten times. We got great neighbors around here. Now, <clears throat> um, model model maker, let's see, what's it? A military modeler Paul, not that one, but the other Paul from Out of the Box Models, that Paul, mentioned that his manual for the Iowa is missing some pages. And uh, just let me check this. I think he said pay, uh, steps 19 through 26 are missing. So, uh, let's just see if mine has got, okay, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay, 19. So 19 is missing. Well, if 19 is missing, uh, 18 must be missing too, unless they just didn't print it. Maybe that's what he meant. Anyway, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I think I can see what maybe happened here. Uh, in, in his manual, this, this uh, section probably is missing. Okay. I guess when they uh, stapled them together, they... <laughs> The uh, folding machine or whatever didn't insert this particular leaf, or whatever they call it. My son would know. He's in that business. Anyway, okay, yeah, mine is here, and uh, yeah, Paul, you were you were mentioning that you were you were glad that the uh, uh, you had an online version. Well, I obviously have have photographed these really really well, so I don't know if my what what I photographed would be better than what you've got or. Anyway, you can let me know. Might be able to email the the files to you somehow. They're huge files, so I probably have to separate, uh, you know, email them as separate files. Anyway, uh, am I trying to get out of having to airbrush? Come on, Ron. No.
Now, I've been giving this a little bit of thought here, and I am wondering if having it three-toned is a mistake. Uh, you know, I was talking about having the the hull, the sides of the hull, and the and the superstructure basically the 19, and then we were going to use the 66 on on the on some of the guns, and uh, then we're going to use 77 on some of this really small stuff. But I'm thinking now that maybe I'm better off forgetting about the 77 and uh, just doing all the small pieces, the 66. They will contrast against the deck tan anyway. All of this is going to go against the deck tan. Um, for instance, these pieces right here are actually the part of the, the base for a part that goes on top of it which is probably not a whole lot bigger than this thing here. Um, but I think that maybe I should forget about doing 77, and I'll just do 19 and 66, and then, of course, there'll be, there'll be deck tan and the odd other color. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got these. Let's, let's try out our, uh, our, our Sharpies here now. All right. Now, I, I don't want to make the mistake that I sometimes do whenever I buy a Sharpie, which hasn't been for a long time, is I will uh, sort of get them mixed up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put away the uh, these ones here somewhere. I wonder, would these last longer if they were kept in the fridge? I don't think they should freeze, although they, they are the permanent ones, so that means it's, that they probably are not water-based. Um... I don't know, just a thought. Anybody know for sure? Would these keep longer in the fridge, or is it just my <laughs> wishful thinking? Anyway, let's, let's just try this out. So this is uh, 28. Uh, I'll just recompose here. Okay, there's always something exciting about trying out a brand new Sharpie, isn't there? Okay. Do I really need to do that? No. Okay, what we'll do is we'll uh, put our piece of, piece of tape over top of that, and when we peel it off, we should be able to read it. Okay, now remember to put the lid on. I wonder if maybe I should be using different tweezers here. Once again, I'm, I'm scared of squeezing hard in case I break these things. I worked so hard to put them together. Oh, now I, now I remember what I was going to tell you, or remind you about, and that is when we did that test with the power supply, I'm sure that some of you noticed that the, that the uh, scene was getting light and dark, or I think it, what did it do, it lightened up and then darkened again, that had nothing to do with the screen, the screen was maintaining the same uh, illumination all the time, but what was happening was the, uh, auto ISO in the camera was compensating for the fact that I was moving my hands in and out of a lighted area and it was uh, 
actually it was overcompensating. I mentioned this before that the best way to shoot a scene like that is to uh, have everything set manually but I don't want to be taking the you know the time to do it so uh, yeah I need a cameraman that's what I need actually you know what I really need I need a model builder and I'll be the cameraman okay now uh, pieces like these ones right here I don't think I need to mark what they are because they are so different from anything else and they are and they are all the same so okay we got that covered where whereas this one here the J5 it's very much like the uh, number 27's here That's basically the number that I want to have covered up because I will know that you know that that if these ones are thirties, well then so are the rest because they're they're identical. So uh, now the number twos here, same sort of sort of deal here. Uh, you know I I don't know why I put the two down there because they they they're, these things are all the same, but. You know, may as well. I went to the effort to to mark them. Let's cover them up just for the fun of it. All right. Uh, now these ones here, twenty fours, twenty three, twenty four. Oh yeah, we talked about that, didn't we? Same number, but different pieces. Uh oh. Alrighty. Sometimes it works good and sometimes it doesn't. Now let's try a different place. You know what? I think I've broken the point off of my knife. Well, I guess I'm going to have to break into one of those 300 blades. And... All right. Now there's a positioning pin under there, so we can put that in one place. Where's my other tweezers here? Okay, put it right on the edge there. Yep. Oh. Um, where's my new Sharpie here? Okay, this is G10. My writing is a little shaky today for some reason. There you go. See, Tony? I'm putting it and writing it on the side. Now, I think possibly your thought was that if I write it on the side I don't need to put tape over it but I think I still do because uh, I think I mentioned this that I found from experience that I 
sometimes overspray down the sides and can't read the number. Okay. Now there's one more, just like it, only backwards. Okay. Let's put in a new blade. I'll do that off camera. So just a moment ago I look up and I'm looking out my window and I'm thinking it looks like the street is wet. And I look over at my thermometer here and at this very moment as I'm speaking to you it's plus 6.2 Celsius. Now that's all right. Okay, I was going to stick these down on here and then I remembered that these pieces here we decided we were going to paint the 19 the same as the uh, superstructure and everything um, yeah so there's this one uh, a mirror image to it over here but this one here uh, it's probably going to be more as we go along I'm going to call today's episode a day so uh, you know what, maybe in tomorrow's episode we'll make the effort and, and try and uh, trim this down. That might be kind of fun. That would be something different to do instead of sticking parts down. Now mind you, there, there isn't a whole lot more parts that I have to stick down. I've got to put the rest of these on, but if I don't press record, they should go fairly quickly. Uh, okay, thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.